right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from actually a wet, wild and windy San Diego. We don't get to say that very often, but uh, that's the way it is today. And I am delighted to be joined from the most beautiful part of England, the Cotswolds, just 40 miles uh, from Oxford. And David Carter, how are you doing, David? I'm doing very well, thank you. I lived yeah, in David's uh, San Diego long. many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, hopefully it was sunny when you were here, because right now it's uh, <laughs> it's almost... For, for San Diego, it's close to apocalyptic weather. <laughs> Uh, and David's a serial entrepreneur, otherwise known as the world's leading CEO mentor with 40 plus years track record in creating innovative business and mentoring uh, leader and influencers around the world. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is character based business training. So, um, David, let, let's let's bottom line it. What do you mean by character based business training? Um, well, this all goes back two and a half thousand years to um, Aristotle. And Aristotle coined the phrase um, entelechy. And um, what he meant by entelechy is the entelechy of anything is the ultimate form of that thing with all of its potential fully actualized. So the entelechy of an acorn is an oak tree, the entelechy of a caterpillar is a butterfly, and the entelechy of John is the best version, the ultimate version of John with all of his right. uh, potential fully actualized. And he also coined another phrase, which is that character determines destiny. So we end up in life wherever we end up as a direct function of our character created a work which maps 54 character qualities that underpin the development of all skills against the 77 in-demand soft skills that employers mm -hmm. feel are lacking in their applicants or workforce and we help them develop the soft skills by developing the underpinning character qualities yeah it's a, it's, it's it's very it's very interesting and how much has has the rapid change with technology and digital and all of that, and now with AI, how how is that all going to affect this? Because I feel like we're starting to live in a in an era when we're not quite sure who any whether anything is real and who people really are. So how does how does it play into that? Well, I think a lot of people incorrectly assume or think that you're born with your character and there's nothing really you can do about it. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing further from the truth. And if you take any one of our 54 character qualities, whether it's being kind or being calm or being analytical or open minded, anybody can be more of that character quality. And at the end of the day, to your arms race of technology and AI question, you know, there's lots and lots of research report in the World Economic Forum, which will say in 10 years time, it will only be, <coughs> excuse me, those jobs that require a human component that will be done by a human. And those other jobs that can be done by a computer, we ought to assume will be, or robot. And mm -hmm. so actually, in order to make ourselves the most relevant, the most employable, what we need to bring to the world is our character because a robot on a computer yep. can't replace that yeah and that's that's a really and i think that's a really interesting point and 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 an important point for people to understand because i mean i would agree with you we're getting a lot of hype around all of these things and and people are being kind of if you like frightened about the future and all of the impact of this but i think also on the flip side of it even before the pandemic and certainly after the pandemic, I think people are still craving the human connection, authenticity, all of those kind of, of things. So I think character is actually maybe this is the right time. It's coming back into vogue, if you like. Well, I think that on top of everything you've just said, there's a there's another overlayer that for the last three years, the entire world has been subjected to mass 
um, fear tactics, um, particularly during lockdowns. And, you know, fear is all about net zero and climate change, the war in Ukraine, collapse of financial markets in the last few weeks and the banks going down. It's like it's fear everywhere you look. And people don't operate to their best in a state of fear. But how do you get yourself out of that state of fear? It is through dialing up a number of different character qualities. And so we really, truly, genuinely believe, and we've got lots of evidence to support this, that you can transform your own life very quickly by dialing up the character qualities that you need to survive and thrive in this chaotic uh, world that we now live in. <laughs> and so what... I know you have a lot of character, but what would be some of the really, um, maybe the most important or most significant character character traits? Um, I always love that question, and I hate it at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I thought you might. <laughs> no, no. Um, because I, I can answer the question in, in, in three different ways. There are 54 character qualities, and depending on your job or your role, there will be some that are more important than others. There are character qualities to be a good partner in a relationship or a mm -hmm. parent or a community member. And so you kind of need all of them, but some of them you need more often. Um, I think also if we look at all of the data from employers who are on the path to becoming a company of character, they will choose more often than not a dozen of the character qualities that they'd like all of their people to be and they might be things like being accountable responsible disciplined organized efficient reliable um but actually if you were to ask me personally mm -hmm. you know, if i had a, a top three that i think are probably the most important for everyone uh, and they're certainly the most important for me I think I would choose uh, being curious, uh, being open-minded, and probably the most important one is being kind. And so if I feel I am kind to everybody I ever get to talk to or meet with or interact with, uh, that helps me be a better person. Uh, if I'm curious, um, I'm going to question what I read in mainstream media and the narrative that we're all mm -hmm. presented with. Um, and if I'm open-minded, I can sit and talk to someone who has a different point of view to me and still listen to them respectfully and learn something from them, and perhaps alter my point of view. But it means that I can still be friends by people who have a completely different point of view to me as long as i'm open-minded and kind yeah no I'm, absolutely I, I couldn't agree more but um the curious one i i do find is i think that's that's a really critical one now because i i feel like a lot of people have lost the sense of curiosity because they're bombarded with all these social media stuff and you know everything is short and bite-sized and all of that kind of stuff that people have lost the ability to be curious and actually say, hmm, I wonder what's really behind that. Or, And I think in both in life and in business, I mean, intellectual curiosity is, is, incredibly, is incredibly important if you ever really want to get behind issues and understand things. Um, I think curiosity is essential. And I think but it is combined with being open-minded mm -hmm. um, and without going down a, a rabbit hole on this. Yeah. I know that, you know, three years ago when COVID first emerged, there were a whole bunch of things that just didn't add up to me innately. It's like, why are we quarantining healthy people, you know, mm -hmm. and locking them? That doesn't make sense. That's never happened before. Or, um, And, you know, we've developed this wonder vaccination at warp speed, um, never been through proper safety trials, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'll listen to the scientists who tell me why it's all is safe and effective, but I'll also listen to the scientists who say it's not going to be safe and effective. And I'll be curious about what are there any motives behind either of both of their messaging that I ought to think about as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in the same way that turkeys don't typically vote in favour of Christmas, 
you know, drug companies are always going to say, well, our drugs are safe and effective and they've been through proper, you know, safety testing trials. But I'm curious, is that, well, how can you have done that in 10 weeks? You know, when it normally mm -hmm. takes 10 years. So, but I've got to be open minded to the fact that it could be a, a miracle cure and it is something that, so I just don't want to accept what I'm told on the, the news or in the newspaper. Mm -hmm as fact and gospel i want to think well who's saying that and what's their agenda and what's their motivation for saying that and i want to counterbalance that with people who perhaps have a alternative point of view yeah and and you know i'd uh, pretty radical nowadays that uh, <laughs> that suggestion that you're actually open minded and look at both sides of of the of the argument um and then uh you know, so this this curiosity, kindness is a, is a is a an interesting one because it's um. I feel I feel like you know we, I feel like we don't promote kindness enough. I think that was because it was interesting because you me you mentioned that. I don't think it's a trait that people think about a lot. Like, am I being kind? Am I a kind person? Um, because we're all in this kind of distracted rush, you know, running around the world, virtually running around the world. I think uh, it reminds me of a, a story in my childhood. Um, I, I had two younger sisters um, and I remember a conversation, I think I was about 10 with my mother. And my mother said to me, you really do need to learn to be more gentlemanly. And I thought, well, okay, um, why is that? And so she explained to me why I should and what the benefits to me would be. And I thought, actually, I, I quite like that idea. And I said, okay, how do I learn to be more gentlemanly? And she said, well, go and talk to your father because everyone says he's a perfect gentleman. So I went and asked my dad, you know, how do you be more gentlemanly? And he said, oh, well, at your age, you kind of fake it till you make it. You open doors for, for ladies. You help them up onto the train with their pram, their in a pushchair. Um, and you always say please and thank you to everybody. And I was like, okay, I can follow that. And then, of course, you know, you help a lady with a pram or push her up the stairs of the station and she's so grateful to you, can't believe it. And you kind of get, like the adrenaline rush of the feedback of being thoughtful or, um, or gentleman in that case. And so I have noticed that, uh, and I, I'd like to think it's in my sort of DNA and my, and my muscle mm -hmm. memory now, but if you genuinely care about whoever it is you're talking to and you try to be kind then they're going to always appreciate that and you appreciate them and the conversation i mean i i've had to a horrible afternoon today i've actually had to let three people in our team go mm. and it was a gut-wrenching horrible decision but i would like to think that i and my colleague who had those exit interviews we were very kind in every aspect of that horrible decision that needed to be done. And I'd like to think that the people who we had to let go said, well, they were very kind and nice about, about it, all, even though I didn't want it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so it doesn't take any more time to be kind, but it gets a lot better results than being an idiot or being rude to people. Yeah, and and what's and and I th I agree with you, and I think it's such a simple thing, and it's easy to do, but it requires you, especially because we do a lot of um, interaction today, particularly in business. You know, we do it over things like this, like Zoom and all that, and uh, digital. So sometimes I think because of that, we don't really sometimes look at the other person as a person. You know, we look at them as a prospect, we look at them as this, we look at them as that, and and that's why we're we're not as thoughtful maybe as we should be because we we've somehow divorced them from being a person if you like <coughs> i'm sorry i do apologize oh no worries um in my career a significant um part of my career has involved um selling Mm -hmm. selling, selling whether it's raising money or selling a product or service selling the vision to employees or whatever it's you know I've, I've always been a salesman but actually to me 
sales is all about understanding the needs, the problems, the pain points of the other person. So again, being curious and open-minded and actually if you if you've got how can we create a win-win outcome here you feel you've got a good bargain you've got a good solution to your problem um and and i i think that being kind in even in a sales process helps you build a bond with someone where you do genuinely care that they buy something from you and it works out and benefits them the way they thought it would rather than you're just transactional right well that was another invoice that got paid on to the next one because obviously kindness is also calling them up a month later saying oh how's it all going is it working mm -hmm. out how you hoped and then i'll call you in a quarter's time and then because then you know in a year's time it, like well would you like to renew the contract and if you've actually been kind and thoughtful about how they're getting on with it and is it working they're much more likely to renew after a year than if you just sold them something and moved on. And part of that is, uh, I think, is is where you are coming from as a salesperson, whether you're coming from a place of, of kind of fear or a place, as you say, of really trying to help people. Because oftentimes, you, as you know, somebody will sell something and then they'll go, OK, I haven't heard from the customer. That's no news is good news. I'm just not I'm not going to touch it because everything is OK now. I don't want to prompt any issues. And I think that when you come from a place of confidence in, in the product service or whatever that you're you're selling and, as you said, you approach it in a human and a kind way, um, you know, then you should be building. You should want to know. You should want to have uh, an ongoing dialogue with that customer. Yeah. And um i i owned a particular brand of car for 14 years and during that period i think i had four cars from a mm -hmm. 50,000 mile second hand one to a 5,000 mile one to a 500 mile to a brand new one and the same salesman looked after me throughout that entire 14 year period and was always you know, phoning me up and not always, but, you know, once a quarter, how's the car going? Are you happy? Do Can we do anything for you? Do you want to come to a, one of our a customer event days and spin it around the racetrack or whatever it was? You know, it's like this guy really cares about me and my enjoyment, my ownership of this car. And, you know, for 14 years, I would never have bought a car from anybody else. Mm -hmm. And why and I doesn't think the same apply to selling anything else? Yeah, no, I think it does. And, and I think one thing that we forget about sometimes is the fact that um, when people, you know, it's making purchasing decisions. It's an emotional thing. Like there's a there's, there's a little bit of fear. Sometimes you get a little bit of buyer's remorse. Sometimes you get a motivation peak and then a dip. But it's really it's really important that you build that relationship so you can help the person through that process. Um, if indeed the, you know, the product or service can do what you think it's going to do. Last week or the week before, I was in Oxford um, and I had to go and sign some paperwork um, with, at our company's bank to uh, add someone on as a signatory. And I met the regional director for business uh, sales and he happened to handle my uh, meeting. And he was fascinated by IntelliKey Academy and character and and he was saying, well, let me tell you a story. At our little bank, which is called Metro Bank, we don't hire anybody who's ever worked in a bank before because mm. we have built a brand um, all about customer service. And so we want to go out and talk to people and hire people who we know from the local community are the best barista in town or the best lady in the post office or... Mm. Um, because they are passionate about customer service and customer care, and we can teach them banking. Well, you know, this particular bank scores off the charts, um, new account openings, customer satisfaction scores year after year after year because of that culture. And they believe it's the character of their employees that they focus on hiring and developing, not their technical skills. And that's such a uh, I, that's a fantastic fantastic example because uh, I certainly know from dealing with the banks over here in the U.S. and uh, 
they're set up, particularly the big banks, they're set up to make sure that you can never, it's really, really difficult to get to anybody. You have to go through phone trees. You got to be transferred. You, you end up basically with the feeling that they, they really, really, really don't want to communicate with you. No, they don't. <laughs> so, um, listen, David, this is this has been fascinating. Um, all of David's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, David, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your organization. Um, I'm the founder and chairman of a company that's at the moment only based in the UK um, called Entelechy Academy, www.entelechy.academy. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, the best way to do that is David C.M. Carter at LinkedIn. Um, so if you look up David C.M. Carter, there's only one of those in the world on LinkedIn. Um, and what we, we've we launched a ex very exciting, innovative, unique, disruptive business this year in the UK, which is helping organizations become companies of character. Mm -hmm. And we believe we can show how developing some, not all, but some of the key um, 54 character qualities can move that company into the sort of top right hand quadrant where their people are delivering the results because they're living the character qualities. And so it's it's optimizing an individual's performance in life and an organization's performance through developing character yeah I, I love it i think character is 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 so important and i and i wish more people you know wish we focus a little bit more on it because i think it's uh it's something that's not uh, promoted as much as it needs to be you know these days um so listen thanks again david fascinating stuff thank you for watching and listening and i will see you all again soon thank you